Hi everyone, welcome to episode four of Vintage Made Modern. I'm gonna finish up chapter three of the Vintage Notions book with you today. One quick thing that I wanted to share with you that I didn't show you last time was the fact that this book is unique in that it offers actually pockets. Pockets for you to store recipes, inspiration, maybe a fashion clipping of something you might wanna sew. And then those happen at each season. So this is the spring pocket, which you can see flips over into the March chapter three of the book. And what we're gonna talk about today are two different articles in the book, one on monograms and another on aprons. So let's get started. I'm gonna flip over to the monogram page and that is right here. You can see monograms make linens distinctive. And this is again, the little department of sewing. So this article was from Inspiration and the year is 1926 and actually it's also, we took an excerpt from the Fashion Service Magazine as well. And that one was 1931. So you can see the pages that there's examples of monograms and different ways to position letters on monograms. So this article mentions techniques for the clever needlewoman. And I thought that was particularly charming way to describe those of us who love to do needlework. So why not share with you a few um, of the hankies in my collection that have monograms. So this is um, an example of a really fun, and of course it's an A, being that my name is Amy, I had to purchase this and the high contrast I love. I love the black and white, and you can see where it's a combination of applique and embroidery, and then even the tiny little uh, probably French knots that are shown um, just add an element um, of contrast and design to the hank to the hanky. Here we have one that's actually just printed with a B for Barrickman. Love the color, vintage colors in this one. And then another M for Maria, my sister-in-law maybe. And again, this is tiny little stitches that have App, that have been used to applique this M on the fun shamrock green, we'll call it. And then there's the E for Emma with the combination of the floral embroidery. So you can have, have a lot of fun with monograms. So how have we made monograms modern with maybe indigo junction patterns? Well, we have a pattern called the petite stitched purse. And this is what the cover looks like. Um, keep in mind, we just actually filmed a video about this purse pattern. So if you haven't watched it, you might want to check it out. But I wanted to share with you a monogram version that actually, once again, my mom comes through for me. She made this purse for herself with her initials on it. And I love the way she combined the chartreuse little, um, edge here or detail with her color of her embroidery as well as the quilted um, fabric that she used one of the one inch grid um, to quilt with. And then you can see the fun detail on the actual strap. So vintage made modern. And I wanna share with you another example of vintage made modern, and that would be our apron pattern, the ooh la la. So where did we get the idea for this design? And it's an adult and child's version. Well, we worked with Wear Women Create, and we looked back into our Vintage Notions book and coordinated our favorite pattern for an apron that's in the book, and that's one that's in this chapter that we're reviewing. So I'm gonna show you what, what that looks like on the page. Um, here you go. This is the slip over apron. And again, in the 
book, we give you dimensions to cut your pattern. Um, this was such a great design that we decided it warranted an actual pattern in the traditional sense of modern, which would be one that uses our tissues um, pattern pieces. So you have the full pattern when you buy it. Um, so keep in mind, we have that available either in the book or as a pattern. And it's right here over my shoulder. Um, this is the style, the slipover apron, or like I said, the ooh la la apron in pattern format. And what I love about this style is super comfortable. The way the neck um, piece lays, it makes it, it doesn't pull. It just fits really nicely. It has a broad, kind of a broader bodice area and bust area. So it's very flattering on many, many different body types. And with the um, tie, you can either keep it shorter and just tie it in back, or you can wrap it around and cinch um, so you have a little bit of a waist if you want, if you so choose. So that again is the ooh la la apron or the magic slip over apron pattern. All right, there's a few more things that I want to share in this chapter. One is the Department of Cookery. Um, so what is again a vintage made modern this is a vintage, completely vegetarian menu. So with today's health conscious society, again, just an example of how timeless this information is and how it may be, you know, definitely something that is practical for today. What I wanted to show you about this was the cool shamrock and you probably thought that fabric in the background was green to start with. Well, guess what? It wasn't. This is the example. It was red. So this is the piece, um, just a small piece of fabric that I, I probably picked it up at Quilt Market or Quilt Festival in Houston, which is a fabulous show to find vintage treasure. It's one of my favorite places. And um, you can see here that these are actually had um, dimension and were embroidered on the fabric. But we converted the we scanned it and converted the color to the green to match the palette of the chapter. So that's just one of the textiles that is part of this chapter and a fun one that I wanted to share. So the, what do we have to wrap up our episode today? We have the my favorite, probably, department, which is the Department of Fashion. And this Department of Fashion article talks about the ensemble. And so what the ensemble, the ensemble dominates. So let me read a little bit to give you an idea of what, what we're talking about here. Every costume, whether sports, travel, afternoon or evening has a coat and quite unmistakably its own coat. The ensemble dominates the mode. Not to have a coat that will make each frock a costume is not to be in fashion's favor. Fashion service dated March, 1929. So, I don't know about you guys, but the rules of fashion were, I think they were much stricter in the days of the Women's Institute, and that's what I've learned studying this material. But I will say that I prefer learning about fashion history, but not exactly following ha fashion history. So that's where I'll leave you today in our Vintage Made Modern episodic series. I hope you'll continue to watch. I hope you'll give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching.